to introduce the Ben Pearson MC-59 Muffler Shop Tube Master. Uh, we're going to go over some of the features of the machine uh, that, are, that make this machine very user-friendly. Uh, you'll notice that it has some nice trays to hold all of your uh, solid die swedgers, your finger swedgers. Uh, it has on the back, it has a setting chart instructions. Everything is labeled very nicely. You'll even notice that even at the top of all your solid die swedgers that it's marked two inch. The collars that also slip into the vise are also marked two inch. Uh, makes it for a nice, easy using machine. Uh, the vise is set up so that it's on a hinge, uh, so that, that hinge operates freely. It also has a nice easy spin collar that goes down to tighten up that vise. Uh, it has your handles. Uh, so that you're by your working source, that if you have your finger swedger here, your handle's right here for ease of operation. And when you're doing your solid die swedging, your handle's also here for easy, easy use. It's right there where you need it. Uh, the ease of install on the, on the tools, there's a flat spot that's set up on your, your uh, cylinder. There's also a, a pin, roll pin in here. You just turn this till it slides on. You turn it till it locks, and there it is. It's easy to put in. Same with your segment holder. It's right here for the vise. Slips in, you install your tube, and this vise flops down, and this tightens it right up. Then you're ready to swedge. Always make sure that when you are swedging and you're done, that you take these collars back out, put them back in their storage tray. That's so nicely designed for use. Slide your tooling back in. That way it's always there for the next person to go ahead and use. It has nice trays on the side. You'll notice for your back shoes, and for your pushing dies, pusher shoes and back shoes. Uh, you'll also notice the nice color coordination on these dies. If you have a white, per se, die, like your pusher die here, it's marked on the top that it's 200-4. That shows that it's a, a two-inch die in the four-inch radius. It'll also be on your back shoe. It'll be notated that it's a 200-1, which means it's a full two-inch shoe. And you'll notice how easy those dies went back into place. They slide back in, there's a three-pin operation, just drops into place. Makes for user-friendly. That's what this company is so good at. It makes it for the muffler shop, ease of use. And design has always been a good part of Ben Pearson. You'll notice that this upper tray has a rail around it. It's a nice place to put your tape measure. You'll need that when you're doing your card bending. It has a place also on the side that you can put, like, say, your magnetic angle finder show, so that you should use one. It also is set up on the top that if you want to use your card bending, it has a place to put your card, which is a nice feature. Uh, when you go around the front of the machine, you notice it's a ram in and ram out that denotes that's a knee operation, and it shows you that uh, you turn the machine on, and as soon as you start the ram operation, the ram actually comes out. Don't ever bend without having dies in, of course. You never want to run the machine without having those in. It runs in, it'll automatically retract after you've had this preset, and it will automatically go back and stop the machine at the same time. Another very nice feature. That way you can keep your hands on your, your tubing. Uh, you have your uh, rotation dial on the end. You're keeping track of all that, and the machine is doing a lot of nice features for you that you don't have to mess with. Okay, so again, the machine always stays on, the ram comes out, starts the machine up. It'll make its bend, it's preset here at uh, 50 degrees, it'll make that bend, you can automatically let go, and the machine will go back and stop. If you don't want it to stop, all you need to do is jog the machine, either in or out, and it'll stop that process. If you want the machine to shut off, it'll automatically go off, go and shut off. Another nice feature of the machine in the back here is if you just wanted to use the swedging operation, let's say you're not going to do any bending, you need to swedge up a, a pipe or you need to swedge up a muffler, there's an on and off switch right back in the back of the machine as well. So always leave your main switch on and you can jog this switch and turn your bender on and off. Okay. Now that we've gone over some of the features of the machine, uh, we'll look at some of the tooling. Now here you have your, uh, this is what you find for your rotation. This slips onto the tube. There's another notch in the bottom here. This tightens down on your tubing, and that's your angle finder. In other words, that's your rotation dial to show where you need that pipe when you're in card bending mode. Okay, And that has also storage right down here. It's easy to get at. Okay, uh, We'll look at some of the other things about the machine are uh, 
when you're using your bender, you'll notice that there's two dials. There's an outer and there's an inner. Your outer, what that's used for is if you wanted a 30 degree bend, you'd just set it at 30 degrees. You go ahead and hit your ram out, it would automatically make your 30 degree bend and automatically retract. If you're not card bending and you just want to know what the degrees of bend you are, you set it back here on the inner scale of zero. On the inner scale of zero, it will tell you the amount of degrees that you're bending as you're doing the process. So you can watch that as it goes rather than having the automatic feature. Okay. We get back then, we want to look at some of the general maintenance on the machine. Uh, we want to look to keep the machine clean and in good operation. These machines will go many, many, many years. I've been in shops, these machines have been in operation 20, 25 years. The reason is the ma machine is built very strong, but also the maintenance on it is done very well. In other words, we want to, because of the business that we're in, if you're pattern bending some tubing, you'll get some rust or some sand or whatever that'll drop down on these shafts. You want to make sure to keep this uh, lubricated with a light spray like a WD-40 or a JB-80 or something of that nature. You don't want to have a heavy grease on here so that it catches all that sand and rust, etc. Because what that'll do is there's some, there's some bushings in here that go around that shaft that keep this pusher die plate nice and tight on the shafts. And if you get a lot of sand and gravel or whatever in there, it'll wear those bushings out. And then you get some play in this pusher die and when it doesn't meet these properly, then what happens is it'll wrinkle the tubing. Okay, you'll need to refer to your owner's manual for any adjustments that you'll need. It specifically shows pictures of some of the wrinkling that can happen and the cures for that and where to adjust it. I will show you some of the adjusting on it as we go. But we want to make sure that all this is kept clean. If you blow it out or whatever, you need to wipe it down, wipe it down. You'll notice that underneath there's a nice flat surface for the back shoe. It's a two-pin operation, just slides in. But in some of the shops that I've seen, they may get some dirt and gravel underneath this, which when it gets pressure on it, can hold that die up and actually physically want to make it move. It can do a couple things. It can wear the pins out. It'll also, so that your pusher does not meet this properly, it will wrinkle your tubing. So make sure and keep that clean down underneath there. There's some points that you light lubricate. You want to lightly lubricate your dies if you're tubing is not pre-oiled, you want to make sure and lightly lubricate that. Again, with a JB80 or a WD-40, somewhere of that nature. Shafts, lightly lubricate there. You want to make sure that you lightly lubricate your uh, solid swedger dies or your finger segment dies. You want to make sure and lightly lubricate those as well. Uh, it's, it's a maintenance that keeps from wearing out the tool itself. Should you ever get somewhere where it gets nicked or you get a, a tube in here that should scar it, use a flat file or a round file, and smooth that back out. If you get anything where you get an edge where it's got a gouge or it starts to leave a mark in here, you want to make sure to flat file that as well and keep that smooth. Uh, smooth operation, smooth tubing. Anytime you get any gougers or whatever, it could cut or tear the tubing if it's severe. Okay? And then there's on the back gates, it shows that there's, a, there's grease zerts here and there's one underneath. You want to make sure and grease those weekly don't have to put a lot of grease, just so a little bit flows out in the bottom of this back gate. Keeps that operation nice and smooth, and also that it doesn't get sloppy on these back gates. Some of the adjustments that they talk about in the manual. If you needed to adjust your upper rail so that you have your die is in a, in a plane of flat, in other words, not raised or lowered, place to adjust that, you would loosen these two bolts, and up in front of the machine, you have two Allen bolts up in there, you would loosen that and then there underneath here is a place to put shims. If you were to need 20 thousandths per se to level out that surface, you'd put 20 thousandths in here, you'll also put 20 thousandths in here. You want to make sure that you run the same, same dimension on your shim on both of them if you're going to adjust it. Never put a 20 and a 30 in it, okay? You can tighten that back down and you can try your bending operation again to make sure that that meets the back dies at the proper angle. Everything needs to be on a level plane here and here. When this meets these, level operation, okay? That'll ensure that your tubing is bending properly. Uh, I will note that a lot of muffler shops say that the, they've gotten some bad tubing and it's wrinkling. Um, eight out of 10 times I've found it's the adjustment of the machine and not the tubing. As long as you use a good grade of 16 gauge tubing or 14 gauge tubing, you'll find that the bender will bend it properly if it's adjusted properly, okay? On these back gates, if you should need to adjust that, again, refer to your owner's manual as to how to do it 
Exactly. But here's your point of loosening. You loosen these Allen bolts here, you'll be able to move that gate up and down and then retighten it again. Okay, if you want to check periodically to make sure that these bushings are in good shape, you can get a screwdriver in there and try to, if it moves an eighth of an inch, you'll want to do some adjusting and you may probably want to replace these bushings. In the owner's manual, it will also tell you how to do that. It'll give you a breakdown of how to get this apart and how to change those bushings. In the back of the owner's manual as well, it's very important to note, uh, keep this at a, at a place where you can get right to it readily. Um, it'll show a parts manual in the back so that if you need to order any parts, you can call Ben Pearson. They stock them. They always have them. Um, you can call by part number and explain what you need. That is in the back of the owner's manual as well as the adjustments that are in the front of it. Okay? We get down to doing some other maintenance. When we get back into the swedger box, you want to make sure to keep that clean and free of debris. You don't want to leave, per se, a die left in there or any of the collars or your or your 45 or flat degree flare, lay it down in there. What can happen at that time is if somebody were to not notice that and operate that machine, you could bend the shaft. So you want to make sure that when you're done with your tooling, you put it back. Ben Pearson makes a real nice tray for that to fit in, so you use it. Okay? When we get around to some of the other operations, the greasing points, there's just your two grease points up here that you actually use grease, and you use grease on this back arbor for your finger swedgers. That way they slide on and off properly. You know, this is how, the, how easy that operation should be. Okay? Light grease here, grease up there. Any of the other tooling, you just need to use a WD-40 or, or a JB-80, somewhere of a light lubricant. In the back of the machine, there is a, uh, a nut, a pipe nut that you can actually take off so that you can check your fluid level. Your fluid level should be at the bottom of that uh, tube at all times so that you have the proper amount of lubrication. Lubrication, use a Chevron 46. Uh, and refer to your owner's manual. It'll give you all the direction that you need to get the right fluids for your machine. Uh, every 1,500 hours, you want to make sure and document that, that you actually change this fluid. At the bottom of the machine, and you can look in your owner's manual, it'll show down below here in your tank, there is a strainer that you can take out and clean. That's actually like a filter, a strainer to keep the debris out of the pump. Uh, you want to make sure that, like I say, every 1,500 hours, change your fluid, put new fluid back in, and clean that strainer. Very important part of the operation to keep that machine going for many, many, many years. And it will at that. Uh, anything that you want to check, you go around this machine, you want to check the hoses, make sure, and just to take a visual check to make sure that none of the fittings are leaking. And if they are, you want to make sure and tighten them up at that time. Just be aware at all times, this is a valuable tool to your business. And so you want to take very good care of it. And if you do take very good care of it, again, it's a highly, highly well-built machine. It'll last a good long time. Another thing that I do in my shop that uh, a lot of shops don't do is I'll get the air blower and I'll physically blow out this engine. This is an air-cooled motor down here. It has a pump down. It has fans in that moves air around. But if there's a lot of dirt and a lot of rust, it could plug it and it could overheat and cause you a problem. Never, ever want to wash your machine. You never want to wash this machine and get uh, moisture down in that motor or the capacitors or whatever. You could ruin the motor. So never do that. Anytime we clean a machine, we take an air blower, we physically blow it off. We make sure that when we're running, we run the machine as we're blowing it out. That way it keeps the particles from blowing into the motor. The motor's fans actually keep it coming out of the motor. That way you take and clean all those areas so that it can cool and it'll be nice and clean. Uh, look for any seepage around that pump. If you see any seepage around the pump, you'll note that a seal might be going bad in between the pump and the motor. Again, owner's manual will tell you what these parts are and how to, how to get new parts. Just call Ben Pearson by part number and get them for yourself. Uh, cleanliness is very important around our shops. Uh, we want to make sure and keep them clean around the micro switches, which you have here and here. Uh, keep those operations clean so it works well. Uh, otherwise, you keep these uh, blown out, and at times, you'll note that there might be a little seepage around a cylinder, upper and lower cylinder. That's very common. These seals will, as they go in and out, they will seep a little bit. Uh, that's nothing to be concerned about. If it's pushing a lot of oil out, then you'll want to rebuild that cylinder and put new seals in. Again, the owner's manual will tell you what seal that'll be, and you might be able to just get it locally as well, but Ben Pearson always has these parts on stock. Okay. We will then go into the, the basic operation of the machine. Uh, we'll get into doing 
showing how the bender actually bends the tubing and then how we'll be able to flare the tubing. Into usage of the machine will show how we're going to uh, bend a piece of two and a quarter inch pipe. We're going to show the two uses of the dial, the inner and the outer. Uh, to do this, we must change the dies. We have two inch dies in here right now, and that's shown by the white that's on the die. Put those back into that nice storage tray. And again, we'll want to use two and a quarter. We'll note that that's an orange die. So we want to get down into the orange die which also on the top of the orange die, it shows that it's a two and a quarter and it's a four inch shoe. Pusher shoe. We'll get into the back shoes, and they're orange, and they also denote that it's a two and a quarter one, which what that means is it's a full shoe. You note the ease of installation of the die, okay? A piece of tubing here, and say you wanted to put a, a 40 degree bend in this, you could preset the machine to 40 degrees, okay? and you'll run the ram out and you'll note the operation that it will actually make that 40 degree bend it'll reach the micro switch and it'll stop it'll automatically retract anytime you want to stop it just jog the machine you know it makes a nice clean 40 degree bend if you want to manually operate this machine and put 40 degrees in that's simple to do as well just pull your indicator back to zero on the inner which is the blue scale and now you're manually making your bend you want to put a 40 degree bend in you can watch that come around you're at 20 if you want to stop and look and say yeah i think i want a little more and we actually bring it to 40 degrees and you can stop run your ram back in look and say yeah that's the 40 degree bend that i want you can run the ram then all the way back in the machine will shut off all by itself makes a nice clean bend I'll now show some uh, end finishing on tubing in a couple different ways. One will use the uh, finger segments. Uh, I'll show you how to operate the machine in that, in that level. We'll turn the machine on. That's another nice feature that Ben Pearson has. Is you can actually turn the machine on and off at this end of the bender so that you don't have to leave your machine running. If we're going to go and we're going to do a Buick ball, a male flare, this is the tool. You can see it's notated orange shows on the side of the machine in orange is two and a quarter. Physically take this tool and you'll slide that on. You see the one hand operation? Here's your lever to operate that end of it. You can either operate it with your hand or you can operate it with your knee, whichever suits you. If we're gonna do a, a, a male Buick ball, we see we have the two and a quarter inch tool in. We'll go to the male ball, we'll show two and a quarter. It shows you a sight of number six in a circle. You'll physically take this and turn it back so that six is actually in that sight hole. And that's where you want to do your end finishing on that number for that die. Slide that on. I can show you a couple ways of doing it. You can either operate it with your knee or you can operate it with your hand, whichever suits your purpose. What I'm doing here, you'll see, is I'm turning that flare. I'll do that a couple, three times to show you that you'll see you don't want to get any flat spots in here and you'll see how those open up as I flare. You want to make sure when you're doing this operation that you physically rotate that on that finger segment back and forth so it makes a nice smooth even flare. Back that off. You now have male Buick ball and two and a quarter. Does a very very nice job of flaring that pipe. Next we're going to take that segment back off we're going to size a piece of two and a quarter to go over itself. We'll actually pick up the fingers that you can see are orange and green. This segment will do two and a quarter and two and a half, noted by the colors that are on the side of the bender. Physically put those on the machine. We'll go to our scale. We want to go inside diameter. We want to go two and a quarter. And so we look straight down below that, it shows that we need to have it set on the round two. So we'll want to run that tool back in until we get right to the center of the round two into that sight glass. Once we're in that sight with the round two, hold those fingers together, go ahead and we'll bump that up. Again, we rotate that tubing so we don't get any flat spots in there, okay? Expand that up. So it's able to fit over itself. 
One thing I always do again, take the segments back off, put them in the storage tray when you're done with that operation. Say, for instance, you're sizing this, and say with the sight glass at two, it actually made the expansion too large. There is an adjustment on the machine. It is this arbor. Refer to the owner's manual. It will tell you exactly how to adjust it. There is a, a section on here that you'll see in here that's flat that you can actually put a wrench on and take that arbor out. They'll have an Allen screw at the end of the arbor, run it in, run it out, however the directions tell you to do so to make that sizing perfect. You'll need to then set the screw, put the arbor back in, and try your pipe again until it gets the desired flare. Once you have it adjusted, it'll stay there for quite a period of time. But unless you lubricate this, you'll start wearing on the arbor and the sizing will start getting different on you. So you want to make sure to keep that clean and lubricated for long lasting setting. Okay. Next thing we'll go to is we'll go to uh, a 45 degree flare and you'll note over here it says flare. So we're going to use two and a quarter inch tubing. You'll look straight down from that. It shows you want your setting on, on a round six. So we want to turn this machine then to where it comes around to the round six. Again, in that sight hole. Okay, we pick up the tool that's made for that. This is the tool that will actually grab the tubing and it will put a 45 degree flare. You notice the ease of installation again, it's a one-handed operation. Again, you can operate this with your knee or with your hand, whatever works best for you. Size that up a little bit. We want to size it up until we can actually get that on that 45. And there's teeth on there that's actually, we'll hook that 45 up. And you get that straight on board there. Again, adjust it a little bit, turn it some. Adjust your tubing a little bit, turn it some. And make a nice, even 45 degree flare for your installation of your gasket and a ceiling surface. There's also another way to do this flare, and that will be on the solid segments. We'll do that next. I'll now show end finishing on the solid die segment part of the machine. Remember that feature of the machine we like so much, we're able to turn it on and off at this end of the machine without actually having to go to the front to turn it on. Turn that part of the machine on. We'll need this speed to collar. Speed collar slides on. That's also the two inch segments flaring device. We will need the female Buick ball. It's also marked on here two and a half and two and a quarter so that it does both sizes of the tubing. We'll slide that on to the end of that speed collar. We then need our uh, segments to put in the vise. We install the one segment in. Well, next we'll put this segment above the tubing. We'll put it actually in the vise tray. We will lock that vise tray down. We'll then lock it with a simple turn at the end. We will now be able to run this machine and run this solid swedger in right to the end. It'll make a very nice female ball flare. To get it out, just unloosen it, flip your vise up, go ahead and tap your collar off, set it back up on the machine to show you what this flare has done. As we've made the mail before, this will usually be a coupling to where you use two flanges, and these will pull together, allowing a flexible joint and a detachable joint that'll seal up very, very well. Because of the expert design and tooling, seals perfect. Another end finishing that we can do with this is that was your Buick ball. We can then do a 45 degree flare and a flat. We'll leave the speed tool in. Go ahead and put our 45 degree tool in. We'll get our two and a quarter collar. We'll face it back down. We'll shut the vise. We'll tighten that back down. We'll then get over here and we'll run the machine into the amount of 45 degree flare that we desire. You can run that back in like so. You have a very nice 45 degree flare here. If you wanted to make that flat, all you do is reverse that tool, slide it back on the collar. We'll then move this machine forward until we have a flat flare. Some applications take a flat flare, some take a 45 degree flare. You see how easy that was to do both operations. Again, unclasp the vise, take your segment off, put it back in the machine. You now have a flat flare or a 45, whichever you desire. The segment tools on the end are a very nice piece of the machinery. They do several things. You can also solid swedge the two and a quarter. 
Again, you take the speed collar off, put it back in where it belongs, and you can put this tool back on here, turn it to the side, take a piece of two and a quarter inch tubing. Again, we get our segment, put it back on there, close the jaw of the vise, tighten it up, and we'll run that back into that tubing and we'll make a real nice inside diameter flare to go over two and a quarter tubing. See how nice and easy that was to get that tool on and off. We'll open that jaw back up, open that vise up, put our tool back in and now you've got a, a slip fit that will go directly over itself. We have other tools here. We have a, what we call a super Chevy, which what that does is that makes the insert and the 45 for the gasket just to slide on. So it has an insert inside the gasket and has a 45 degree flare for that 45 degree gasket to butt up against. If you flip that tool around, you've got the super Toyota flare. And that puts a flat flare with a little stub out to put your flat gasket on, okay? And then you have your other sizes, your solid segments for your other ball flares. And it's notated on here like inch and three quarter and two inch do inch and a half, okay? So all these solid die segments you have are right in the nice trays, easy access, and again, you've got the shut off the machine right here at the back. Located our card by looking it up in the book and pulling it out of the, the particular box. Here's our part number for the card. It shows that it's a 1982. It shows it's two inch diameter pipe. It shows that it fits a Cutlass, a Grand Prix, a Malibu, Monte Carlo, and Regal. Down below that it says six cylinder application. See catalog for application. If you have any questions, go back to the catalog. It'll explain it further. Down below it says program instructions and symbol interpretation. You want to read that. It says use four inch radius die. You want to make sure your four inch die is in here. Star, it says use half shoe. Saw cut rear to suit appearance. Now we'll go up here to our symbols and we'll find that it says the first bend, it's showing a short shoe. It still shows it on the second and it still shows it on the third. Fourth is rear and that shows cut at 30 inches. So when we mark our tubing, we're going to mark it at 30 and one thing you might want to do is run a couple slash marks across that line at 30 to show that it's a cut and not a bend mark. That's something just to kind of help you along the way. You'll note that the first bend reads left to right. It shows you uh, instructions, it shows you the length, it shows you the rotation, which you always start on zero, and then it shows you the depth setting. Move to the next line, it shows you the same. We're bending from right to left, so we know then that our short shoe will go into the left side of the bender. What we'll do now is we'll get our tube tubing and we'll get our die switched. Uh, we already know we've got the right four inch radius die, a two inch diameter, because it says it's white it's, and it also has the numbers on top. So we know what the dies are. We'll change those now. We'll get the tubing in so we can get it measured and get it cut. Now got our tubing and we're ready to mark it. We know by looking at the card that we need to put the short shoe in on the left hand side. Reason being, we bend from right to the left, shows a short shoe, so now we'll change that. It'll be so noted on the die, it'll say 200-H, which means half. Put our die in, we want to put our die in and then snug our tubing up. Nice feature about this machine, it also has a spring-loaded head. You'll note that the shaft goes in without dimpling the pipe. That's used for marking tubing and not putting a dimple in. Anytime you've got a dimple in the pipe, of course, and you should happen to come across that with a, a pusher die, it may dimple or wrinkle the tubing. So that's a nice feature to have. Now we'll go ahead and measure the tubing out per the card. And it'll show length marks on here on down the line. You want to make your marks on the seam. That way you've always got a reference point to come back to. You know you've marked it across that point. The next thing you want to do is when you put your rotation dial on, you'll also want to put that on the seam. I'll explain why when we get the dial on. We'll make our marks now. Shows we've got a mark at six. We've got a mark at 11 and one half. We've got a mark at 19 and a half. 
and then we have a cut at 30. What I said before was we'll make that cut line, we'll extend those marks out just a little bit so in case you should happen to rub one, you're still going to be able to come across it. But we'll put a couple X's across that. I do that for one reason. That way I know that's where the cut's at, and that's not a bend line. Okay? Put that away. Hang up our tape measure. Go ahead and run the ram in. We're going to line that line up with the center of these dies. We're going to leave that in the up position because that's where our rotation dial is going to go. Rotation dial goes on as such. The bottom of the tubing, you'll see there's a cutout for it. Okay? We'll do that facing you. We'll go ahead and put that on the seam of the tubing. Go ahead and snug that down on the seam. The reason why I do that, if, for instance, you're bending a pipe and, and this dial should happen to touch something like a vise, a bench, or something in the way, it may move it. If you had not had a reference point to go back to, you'd have to start this job all over with a new piece of tubing and start over. At least this way you've got a reference point. You know that that was zero. It was on the center of that seam line. Good thing to remember. Quick little tip. To better understand the rotation dial, let's take a closer look. You'll see the ball rotating at the bottom in its track. You'll see that we use the outside numbers for the card. When we're bending a pipe, we set this pointer right on the center line of the tubing. Okay, that's on the seam. Okay, then when we rotate, we read the outside dial. If you were to do like a dual job, per se, on a vehicle and you needed a pipe for the other side and you didn't have the card for it, then what you'd do is you'd read the inside number Follow the card the same way. Just use the inside, and it would make a mirror image of the card that you've already started to bend. The one other thing that we do that we talk about is we set this pointer on this seam. There's a reason for that. You may be bending and maybe bump the vise or bump a bench or bump a car or bump the hoist, something on that order. You may move this rotation dial. If you didn't have a reference point to go back, you'd have to start over. What this does is it allows you to bring that dial back to the center, and if you make that a rule of thumb, habit, you'll do it every time. You'll know what you can do to save your pipe if you ever bump it. On our first bend, it showed that we're at six inches, we're at zero angle, so we're at zero angle on our dial. That's where we want to be. Our bit depth setting is 41. So we can go ahead and set this outside dial so that it automatically shuts off on its own at 41. We'll go ahead and hit the ram in. It'll go ahead and make the bend. When it hits the end, it'll be done and it'll retract on its own. Jog feature on this bender is very nice because you can stop this as it's going back automatically. You see I had both hands on the tubing. Okay, We're going to get back to our second bend, which was at 11 and a half. Center that line with the center of these dies, okay? Our, our bend setting is at 73 degrees, so we'll rotate that back to 73 degrees, okay? Snug that machine up. Looks like we've got a 59 degree uh, for your depth setting. We'll back this off to 59 degrees. She's in the automatic mode. We run the ram in, and it'll bend it to 59, and it'll retract on its own. Back off the die, you see it's backing in. We jog it and stop it. Go to our next bend, center that line, center of the die, bring it in, snug it up a bit. It reads here that we're at 221 degrees. So we're reading this outside dial, bring it right around to 221 degrees. All right, it says that our depth is 27 degrees. We'll go ahead and set that on the Outside dial again, that's your automatic. And we'll bend it to 27 degrees. It'll automatically come back. We can jog the machine, stop it. We see where our cut line's at because we remember we've made the two marks across there, okay? We can now loosen up our rotation dial, take it off, put it back in its place. We can set this in our machine then so we can see our cutoff mark. And that's where we'll cut it off. Use a rigid 30 cutter, 
small enough to do the job, not too large. Does a very nice job of cutting the tubing. When I cut the tubing, I always try to make the rotation of the cutter. These are simple things, but it saves you commodities. And commodities, but I mean the cutting die, the screw on it, saves the rollers. Go one direction, okay? You see where the roller's at? You're pulling that away from you, okay? And you just make a little bit of a quarter of a turn each time that comes around, and you've made your cut. Go one way with that cutter, and you'll save that blade. Okay, we're going to back that ram back in, take that short section of tubing out. We now have a pipe. It did say on the card that on the cut at 30, it said down below, it says saw cut to suit appearance. So what you want to do is you want to install this tailpipe, which slides in the muffler. You want to make that mark in here, wherever that quarter panel is. If you want to angle cut it, you can do it with an abrasive saw. You can do it with... Uh, you know, a sawzall, whatever you prefer. Cut it on the vehicle or off the vehicle. And there's your finished pipe. Does a very nice job, no wrinkles. You know that pipe's gonna fit. We have just done a card bend. Now I'll, I'll show you a pattern bend. And basically we're going to use the pipe that we've made off the card for our pattern. How we do that is, uh, somebody comes walking in your shop and has a piece of pipe they want to carry out, they have a pattern, you'll be able to come back to the machine and make it. Or, if you have a car that does have an old piece of pipe on it, uh, and you can't find a card for it, you'll need to know how to pattern bend. And this will also get you down the road to free bending. So, what I'll show you here is how to pattern bend this pipe, make this one the same as this one. So we'll turn our machine on, we'll run that die in, and the first mark we want to make is, want to make from here to the center of the bend. So we'll butt that up with the end of that pipe so that it's all on the end. We'll go ahead and roll that pipe down. There's a reason why I roll it, and I'll explain on the next bend. We'll run that in so that that mark center lines the center of the die. Okay? We'll go ahead and lay our pattern up over the top. We can actually watch it come around and you can actually do this over the top or another good way to do it too is to get it behind and the die and the back shoe will be at the same dimension okay so you can actually look over the top of it or you can fit it back behind here and watch the back shoes okay so now we have that mark made have it bent we'll center that mark with the center mark here we'll want to then roll this out Okay, we got the centered here, parallel this, roll this out, make our mark. Reason why I continue to tell you to roll it is because if you had some distance between the bends and you did not roll it, you could come as up to at least an inch short between your bends. So you try to roll it to get maximum distance. Okay, when you're going to pattern bend the next bend, you want to make sure that this, this is your bend that you're going to make. This is parallel with the tubing that's in the, the bender. Go ahead and snug your bender up a little bit so you're able to roll this around. This is parallel with your pipe. What you want to be concerned with is looking at this angle to this angle that they're parallel, the same. Okay? Straight, parallel. Okay? Now that you know that, go ahead and make your bend. Get behind it or up over the top if you prefer and make that bend, okay? Look at it, double check it over the top, center that line then with your center here, roll that out, make your mark, back your bender up, center line that mark with the center of the dies, okay? Snug that up a little. This is the bend you're making, again, parallel, with the pipe that's in the bender. Lay this flat down on top of the dies. You can feel it move one way or the other. You can feel it come center. Turn that back down. Look it through here that these angles are the same. This is parallel with your tubing. This gap is the same. You're sitting flat down on that. That's very important as well. Make sure you're flat down on that. Make your angle the same. 
Go ahead and snug your bender up. Take another look. Looks good. Make, make that bend. Again, you can do it behind or you can do it over the top. Center of the bend, center here, cut off point. Now you can cut your pipe off. Make the two slash marks like I've talked about earlier so that you know that that's a cut mark and not a bend mark. Now we have a pipe that's patterned to this one. Set that on the floor. We'll show how that uh, lines up, how they look the same. Angles are the same, height is the same. We have a nice pattern. We have shown how to pattern bend. This is another way of bending if you have a vehicle that comes in that absolutely has nothing on it. Let's say they put an engine in a classic. Uh, let's say they stripped the system off, hit something, tore it off, whatever. You do not have a pattern. You don't have a card for it. You need to make a pipe for it. One simple way to do that is to uh, actually take an eighth inch piece of wire, the welding wire, copper tubing, whatever you have in stock. I like to use that wire welding rod because it holds its shape very well. So what I'll do is to make a pattern. Let's say we'll make that pattern. Realizing, of course, that that's only eighth inch. You want to realize it in the size of tubing that you're using. Let's say two inch. Let's make sure it misses everything on the vehicle that needs to miss, giving yourself plenty of distance between things so that you can actually get that pipe into place after you've made it. Now, basically, I've just bent a piece of wire that's going to fit this particular application. Show you how now to make a pattern in pipe off of this. Go ahead and start our bender up here. Uh, get started up. We'll take our first bend. We'll center that bend in the center of the dies, and we'll make our pipe come through to match that length. Okay. We'll go ahead and start bending process. Make sure uh, use a couple different ways. You can do it on the back side of these dies if you prefer. In the back gates, that, that moves the same as what the uh, front dies do. Or if you better like it, you can put it over the top of the pipe and watch. Now we'll set this over the top with the center lined up with the center. And we'll go ahead and we'll mark our next bend. We'll want to roll that out, mark that center. Now we have our next bend marked. Go ahead and run our dies back in. We want to center line that mark with the center of the dies here. Okay? Want to then lay this piece of wire on. And we'll lay that so that that fits flat on top of the dies. Flat. And being as we're using this bend, we want to run it parallel to the tubing. Then we'll rotate our pipe around so that we can get that angle. We'll tighten that bender up just a little bit. We'll look through here and make sure that this is the same angle here. This is running parallel. Same angle here. We can go ahead and make our bend. Again, up over the top, across the back, whatever you're accustomed to. I like the back, I have more vision. Okay, we got that. We'll set that wire back down, making the center of this bend, the center on here. We'll go ahead and look out here and get the center here. We'll go ahead and mark the pipe. Run that back in. Want to center line that mark in the center of the dies again, like we've talked about before. We'll lay this flat on top. This is our bend. We want to make sure that runs parallel. Snug the machine up a little. We'll run that pipe up there so that the angles are proper. Again, parallel with the pipe after this bend. Go ahead and lay this flat on top. Hold your fingers on it so it's flat. Make sure that your bend's proper. Make your bend. Again, behind center, doesn't matter. Make a cutoff point if you prefer or leave it and fit it for the application. We'll set this pipe down on the floor. We'll show you how it matches the wire. Now you've made a, a pattern off a piece of welding wire on a vehicle that didn't have anything on it when it come in. You're able to make a pattern when you don't have a card or something to copy. Now made a pipe. to show you now is how to build a card off of a pattern. 
Um, we've already done a card bend. We've showed you how to use the rotation dial, the depth of bend, uh, and how to map one out. We've shown you how to pattern bend a pipe. We've showed you how to wire bend a pipe, making something out of something you don't have. Now we want to document it for future reference. Let's say you have a newer truck come in, like a Chevy Dodge or a Ford. You've made a difficult driver's side tailpipe. Didn't come in with one, so you've manufactured one. You've made it fit, and it fits very well. You know you're going to do more of them down the road, so you want to document that information. I will now show you how to pattern bend that pipe and record the information, just like it is on a regular factory card. We'd want to put the vehicle make in here. We'd want to put the diameter of tubing in here, the year of the vehicle. We'd want to put the application. We'd want to use... We want to use the information down below if we used a four inch radius die. If we used a half shoe, we'd want to note it just like you would on a factory card with a star. If you saw cut the rear to suit appearance, you want to make sure and write that on the card. We'll go right over here to the symbols and we'll show you that that's the first bend. Any notations beside it. Go on down until you get the cut length. Okay? Everything goes in a line just like it does in a factory card. What we're going to do is just manufacture a pipe, record the data for future reference. Now we'll go get a pipe and we'll show you how to do it. We have our pipe and we have our pattern and now we're going to build a card. So we want to put our tubing in the bender. First thing we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that we get from the end of the pipe to the center of the bend just like we did in our pattern. We'll roll it on there and then we'll mark it. Mark our first bend. Okay? Put that center line in the center line of the dies. And now we'll want to document the length. So we have eight inches to the first bend. So we get up here on number one. We want to mark that we have eight inches on that bend. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll put our rotation dial on be our rotation dial we learned in our card. We're going to put that on the center line, right on the center of the seam on the tubing. And why? Because if we should happen to bump it, we've got a reference point to come back to. It's a good tip to remember. We'll now want to set that on zero. Set that on zero. We want to snug up that pipe in there. And again, we want to take we're going to bend our pipe. Now, you can either do it up and over the top if you desire, or you can do it at the back. I prefer to use the back. Now that we have that amount of bend, we want to go down here and record it. Now remember, if we were going to do an automatic setting, we'd have set it on the outside of those marks. We're doing the inside because we're doing it manually. So we want to look at the blue line to record our amount of bend. Looks like we've got 39 degrees of bend. We're at zero rotation, 39 degrees of depth. Now we've recorded the first bend. Now we'll want to take center line, that bend, on the center line of this bend. We're going to roll this out. Why? So that we get the proper distance. Set it down, parallel, actually set it down and roll it out. We can mark that. marker. We'll go ahead and then and measure from the center line of this bend, the center line of this bend, which is 12, and add it to the 8, which makes 20. So we'll want to mark 20 for our second bend. We'll go the length at 20. Okay. We're going to want to then back the machine up, center line that on the center of the dies, We'll set our pattern up here. Remember, just like we pattern bent before, this is parallel with the tubing. We'll rotate this around until we get the proper angle, matching this angle here. This is parallel. Match this angle here. Tighten up your die. Look down here to the bottom of your rotation dial to see where we're at. We're at 213 degrees of angle. So we'd write 213 on your card. Now, 
we're going to get the depth of that bend. Remember that we read the inside dial. Go ahead and make this bend. Like line it up at the back, like we've done in the past. Pattern or wire. If you prefer to set it over the top, that's fine. Now we want to record the depth of bend. It's like we have 60 degrees bend. We'd want to mark that at 60. Okay. Going to go to our next bend. Center line this with the center line of the tubing that's in the bender. Roll this out. Make our mark. Okay. Bring that tubing in, set our pattern up, making sure that we've got it parallel. Remember we said parallel here. Now we've got to rotate this pipe around so that it matches. I want to make sure that these angles are correct. This is running parallel. Angles are correct. Next thing we want to note then is our degree. Looking like we're at 48 degrees. Okay, we want to measure then the length between them. We'll add that 13 to the 48. We're at 61 inches. Make sure that we get that length down at 61 inches. Okay. Now we'll want to make that bend. Again, you'd go on the back side, you'd go over the top, whatever works the best for you. Okay? Now we'll record that amount of depth of the bend here. It looks like it's 28 degrees. So we've got 28 degrees. Okay? You'll then mark your rear for cut for the proper length that you desire. Measure from that bend to the end, which will add to your depth here, or your length here, which will give you a total length, and you can mark that as your cut. Go ahead and take your rotation dial off, store it where it needs to be, back your pipe out, and you've got yourself a pattern. Not only do you have yourself a pattern, but you record it on this card for future reference. Any notes that you need to make down here for the cutoff or for the finish cut at the end or whatever you want, like an angle or a straight or the proper length, uh, or if it works with chrome extensions or whatever, make that note down below here so you can remember it the next time. Anything that's special, record it. Now you'll be able to go back and use this card just as you did before when you card bent. What we've done is we've got the vehicle up on the hoist, we've got the front wheels chalked to make sure the vehicle can't roll. We have our ramps at the back, the ramps come down and they work as a chalk as well. We know that part's safe. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to check and find if there's any leaks fore and aft. So we'll check up here by the exhaust manifolds and we'll look that over real good to make sure that we don't have any leakage. You usually can find some black city areas. You want to check the air tubes, the air tubes that go into the catalytic converters follow those around and check all that out to make sure we don't have any leakage. We'll work our way back and we'll check around the flanges and around the weld. Usually when you get around a weld, that's what hold moisture and that's where you'll have a rust out point. Another point that you'll have is any time you put two pieces of pipe together and weld them, you're going to have a rust out point there as well. Okay? We work our way back then and we check the inlet of the muffler. We want to check the neck of the muffler to make sure if it's broken or if it isn't. We want to check that uh, seam because now we have two pieces of pipe together again, so we want to make sure that they're not rusted out or broken, and we'll check that. Next thing you want to do is you want to thump test the catalytic converters. You want to make sure that they're not rattling inside. Check them underneath, and then we'll go back and we'll do the same thump test on the muffler to see if there's any baffles loose. You'll find with catalytic converter vehicles that what happens is, is they rust from the inside out. The three Bad gases turned into three good gases. Uh, one makes water, and uh, the other two gases make an acid. So you'll have more rust out from the inside out than you will from the outside in most generally. That's why you need to check the baffle tubes. We'll get back here and we'll check the neck of the muffler, and we'll check these straps to make sure that 
these straps aren't rusted through or pulled through and that the neck of the muffler is okay at the rear, that the tailpipe where it joins again, we have two pieces of metal joining, that's a good rust out point. And then follow the seam up and around the tailpipe and make sure that that's not rusted out. One other thing you might want to check is too is the routing of the tailpipe, making sure where that goes that it needs to miss the gas tank. And you see that it moves inward so it misses the swing arm up here and then it comes out and it misses the tire. And then it has to go outboard outside the frame and roll with the quarter panel so that it meets the hanger back by the bumper. You want to kind of take a quick look at all that and how the pipe fits before you cut it off so that you've got a good reference point of where to start because you're going to custom bend this system from start to finish. So you want to see how it fits before you whack it down. Uh, what I've found here, another thing to check is also is to check the thickness of the tubing. By that we use the pliers and we, and we flex test it to find out if the tubing's any good or not. If it squeezes, most of the time it's weak. And you want to check again, any time these metal to metal joints fit or you get a joint going into the muffler, like fore and aft, you'll find that there's joints fore and aft. You want to check those to make sure that they're good and solid. And you might check on the seam of a tailpipe here because you'll find in a lot of these aluminized systems is the aluminized pipe is pretty good but wherever the seam's at, that might be the spot you want to squeeze and check because that's probably where you'll have your first breakthrough is on the welded seam. So locate that seam and squeeze it and make sure you can, that it's good and solid. Okay? Then I go through and I start checking to see what I'm going to replace. And on this particular vehicle, we're going to cut these bolts off. So we know we're going to run the torch up here. And we try to minimize our cuts. We'll put a stand under the muffler so nothing falls and drops and hurts anything like your feet or your hoses or whatever. We'll then cut this tailpipe off with a saw. We'll go ahead and undo these self-tapping screws that hold the muffler up. Therefore, we're able to take this system off in one piece. We've only got the bolts to cut off and one saw cut here. At the back of the car, we have a welded uh, hanger assembly and then spot welded on either side of the tailpipe, so you need to clip those. That way you can save that hanger and wire weld that hanger back to your new pipe. But before you do any cutting, safety first. Here we have the gas tank. You want to make sure and look around that gas tank. Look around and find any fuel lines. Make sure that the tank is not leaking by any of these straps, by the seam, or by any of the fuel lines. Follow that fuel line up. You'll find that there's a fuel pump here. Make sure there's no cracked lines or fuel leaking. Follow it all the way to the front to make sure we don't have any fuel up by the engine dripping. We don't have any fluids that may catch fire by the use of the torch. Remember, safety first. Remember where the system is going to come down when you go to cut it that that thing could drop down and swing and hit somebody or yourself or cut your torch hose in half and maybe cause a fire that way. Always think of the safety. Keep your torch hoses behind you, your air hoses behind you, etc. And watch where you're blowing your sparks. I see a lot of newcomers in this business that, yeah, they're cutting their bolts like they're supposed to, but it depends upon where they're blowing the sparks. If you've got a car in another hoist or car down on the ground next to it, you could blow sparks on the windows and pit the windows. Or you might have another worker over there and that worker might get sparks down his shirt or legs or whatever, and you could hurt somebody. And of course, when these hot bolts hit the ground, make sure you're not standing on those when they hit the ground. There's a lot of safety things to keep in mind. Safety first. So now we know what the system is going to look like. We've looked it all over. We know what we're going to cut off and how we're going to proceed. Now we take a mental plan of the parts that we're going to need. And I usually try to look at how much tubing I'm going to use so I can minimize the scrap. Looks like this front pipe, if I build this, I can get by with a seven and a half foot piece of pipe. Looks like we we'll probably only have about six inches of waste. I know that that tailpipe, by doing it uh, for several years, I know that that tailpipe is going to be seven foot in length and there'll only be an angle cut at the end, be no waste. I know that the muffler I need is an original equipment muffler. It has two brackets on the back and we need to look that muffler up and make sure we get the proper muffler so that it bolts back to the factory hanger so it looks like a professional job. Again, note where the tailpipe rot rotates around, what it's supposed to miss, the gas tank, the swing arm, the frame, the tire, so that it meets the hanger at the back. Make a mental note of that before you start cutting so that you know how the system has got to fit back in. After we've made our final inspection, we know what we're going to do. First thing then, we'll go ahead and cut these bolts. We're going to take this system off the vehicle, and then we're going to start to do the bending procedure to install a new product. I'm going to saw cut this tailpipe here so we're able to get it out. Okay, we've got that. 
that loose. I've cut the tailpipe off. Now I want to put a support underneath the muffler so that when I unbolt it, the system does not fall. Good safety feature. I want to use a good uh, face shield with a complete face shield instead of just an eye covering. It covers your face in case any sparks should blow back. When I light the torch, it's set up and we're ready to cut the bolts off. We're going to cut the bolts off and always remember where the sparks are going so that you don't burn yourself or others. As I'm cutting, I try not to use a lot of oxygen. In other words, that's the propellant that gets the hot stuff away. I try not to use a lot of oxygen force. That way, if I run into any dirt or any rust, that I don't have it blow back on me. You'll notice that I'm not getting a lot of sparks on me. A lot of guys hit the oxygen wide open, and they just basically blow all this stuff on them. And that gets to be a bad deal. That stuff does hurt. We'll shut the torch off. Next thing we'll want to do then is we'll get the air wrench. We'll take the two self-tapping bolts out of the back of the muffler, which support the muffler. We still have our stand here. We we'll want to make sure, too, that uh, if this should happen to drop and you couldn't uh, catch it, that it didn't drop on a torch hose. Make sure you put that out. OK. We now have the self-tapping screws out of there. Ready to take our support. We'll hold our muffler take our support away, and we'll actually just drop this system now, and we'll take the system off and discard it. So now we're going to go to the back of the car. We're going to cut that strap off on either side. OK? Again, trying not to use a lot of oxygen. Don't want to burn yourself or others. We've got one more side over here we got to cut. So we're going to cut that off. Again, not a lot of oxygen in case you run into any dirt or anything. And now you've got that loose, you're ready to take it out of the vehicle. One thing we talked about when we ran this vehicle in is that we wanted to make sure that the rear wheels were at the rear cross section on the post. There's a reason for that. If you did not run that vehicle there, you would not be able to get this tailpipe out. It would hit this, hit this cross beam, and you wouldn't get it out. Being as we've centered that now over that cross beam, we can take this tailpipe right out of the vehicle, and we're able to discard that and put the new one in when we're ready. OK, we're going to basically do some simple installation now. We've picked out our muffler. We know we've got the factory replacement muffler. I bring over the clamps. I have those ready and staged ready to go. I have new self-tapping bolts so we can put this hanger back together. And I've got new flanges here that I'm going to bolt on. I usually take my pliers and I clean off that gasket surface. But we're going to put our new gasket on to make sure that we don't, we don't have anything in there that's going to cause any problems for leakage down the road. OK, I have new flanges. I have new gaskets. And I have bolts. I'm going to bolt this system up, this uh, flange system and gasket up to the old catalytic converters. We'll bolt that into place. We will just snug those bolts. We won't tighten them yet. We're just going to snug those bolts. There's a reason for that as well. If you were to tighten those bolts, what would happen is, is you'd actually bend that ear over and so that when you uh, welded it, because see, you've got your gasket surface in between these two flanges. If you physically went down right now and super tightened that, there's a gasket surface in it would squeeze this together and leave a gap into here. Then when you weld your new pipe in, you've already got a bowed flange. There's no way of straightening that. So you'll need to remember not to bolt it tight, just to snug it up until you get ready to do your final, which means you'll do your weld, and then you'll tighten the flanges up solid. OK? As we finish bolting this up, next thing we'll do then is we know that we're going to build one side. We're going to take the whole right side and install the right side before we do the crossover pipe. So we're going to custom build a crossover. We're not going to put on a purchased one piece. We're actually going to build one here. So now what I need to do is just snug these up because I want them centered. OK? Center that up. We'll snug these bolts. Not going to tighten them much. 
Okay? Get our air wrench and get that so we can hold it. Working alone here. We've got our muffler. We're going to install that to the hanger at this moment. Take our self-tapping screw. We'll get it started there. We'll take our air wrench and we'll go ahead and snug that bolt into there. Okay? That hanger will hold it in place while I get my other self-tapping screw. We'll line up that hole. We will self-tap that in. Now we've got our muffler so that it'll hang by itself in its place. The next thing we know is when we get up to the front of the muffler, we'll know then the length of the tubing that we're going to install into this, okay, remembering how the system came off. The next thing is there's a flat spot in the floor. Uh, at the beginning of that bend for the flat spot is where we want to make a finger mark across. That'll be our third bend that we'll make. We realize after looking at the old pipe, taking it off, that we need to get from point A, which is here, to point B, which is in the drive shaft tunnel. So we need to make approximately a 50 degree offset, which is two bends, two level bends, level here, level here. Then we'll get back to this point, we'll bring the pipe over, we'll mark it for that bend. And the nice thing about marking it for that bend there is you know after you've bent it, you put your 25 degree offset that has to kick up and out to the outside at the same time. I'll show you how to do that roll at the pipe bender. It's hard to show it here, but it's got to go up and it's got to go over, and then it's got to come level into the muffler. If you've made this mark, you'll know where your cutoff is. It'll save you steps to and from the bender. We already know where the muffler's going to be positioned for the tailpipe. We know that it comes up over and out. So the beings we know that, we can go ahead and go free bend the tailpipe, and we'll bring it over and install it. The one thing you'll need to remember, uh, what we're going to do here from start to finish is we're going to complete the whole right side and clamp it, support it, and finish it into its point. After the right side has been fully installed and completed, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build my crossover that comes in and hooks into the right-hand side. We're going to hook the left side into the right side. I'll show you how to make the hole in the pipe, how to mark it and cut it, weld it into place. That'll be the very last thing we do is hook that pipe in. Now we're going to uh, go over to the pipe bender. We'll make our front pipe and to install it into the muffler so that we're uh, ready to make the tailpipe and install it as well. Now we're ready to bend that pipe we talked about underneath the car. It's two inch diameter tubing that's been predetermined. We've looked over the pipe to know how that is supposed to fit on the vehicle. I already know that I need approximately seven inches to my first bend. I know that my die is seven inches in length. So the first bend I'm going to put in is I'm gonna follow this around to 50 degrees and that'll be my first bend. I'll back this, retract the machine. I also know that it's gonna be close so if I rotate this around and slide it up in so it's tight against the die, I know that that'll be good enough for my next bend. Because of what I want to do is I want to make an offset that comes out of the catalytic converter and up into the drive shaft tunnel. This needs to be level because that's how it comes out of the catalytic converter's level. So our next bend we know will be parallel with that, level with that. We'll make 50 degree bend in that as well. The only other thing we need to do now is we need to go over to the car we need to make that mark in this tubing that I told you about to roll that pipe up and out into the muffler because the muffler actually sits up higher than what the drive shaft tunnel is. So now we'll go over to the car and make that mark and we'll come back and finish our bending. Walk back underneath the car. We're going to put that pipe right into the catalytic converter extension. I've already made a mark on the floor. I know that this is Around it here, it starts to flatten out and go up, and that's where I want to make my bend to go up and over. So I'll just physically make a mark on that with my finger. We'll walk over to the bender. We'll put our last two bends in. The go. It has to angle up and outward to meet into the muffler and be level. So we'll go make those bends now. We'll come back over to the pipe bender. We'll take that mark that I've made in the pipe. We'll install it in the center part of the die. We'll run that ram in and I'll now show you how to get that over and up at the same time. If you were just going to bring this pipe straight over and make a level offset, you'd have this level. If you were going to bring that pipe straight up, you'd have this straight up and down. But we want to split that difference from here to here, like at a 45. We want to split that difference is all we want to do. We want to put 20 degrees of bend in right there on that mark, okay? Now, we're gonna come in 
We're going to pull this in real short into our die, and we're going to rotate this so we make an offset. Realizing how it fits on the vehicle, make this level. Make this level with your die. That makes a level offset. The one thing we're going to adjust for is the muffler usually on most vehicles kicks to the outboard side so it gets away from the drive shaft. So we're going to rotate that pipe up just a couple degrees, and then we'll look over the top, and we'll make that offset equal so that it's parallel. OK? We'll note that that's less than 20 degrees, because what happens is, is when you pull a bend this tight together, it will pull a little bit of bend out of here. We're going to cut that pipe off now, because we've already predetermined that if we marked it at this point and made our offset, all we need to leave is our two inches from the dimple of the bend to the cut, and that will slide into the muffler and clamp. So again, we'll cut this tubing off. What's left here will make the final piece of the crossover pipe. We made our cut off. This is the last portion of the seven and a half foot piece of pipe we started with. We're going to use that to finish the crossover pipe and not have any waste. So we'll set that off to the side to use later. The one point that I want to make here is to show you that offset we talked about. By laying that flat on top of here, you're able to see that that pipe doesn't kick straight up. It actually kicks up and over to the outside of the vehicle like we needed. Kicks up and over, and then this brings it back level and allowing just a couple degree of chase for the muffler to move over away from the rear axle housing and the knuckle. Okay, so you can see by this that it comes over here, kicks up and over at the same time and levels out, and you see how you can do that in one bend. Now we'll go over and we'll install this on the vehicle, slide it into the muffler, and we're ready to weld this front section. I'm going to come back underneath the vehicle now, and we're going to install this pipe. Save steps. Go ahead and put your clamp on there first. Slide it into your muffler. The muffler we've already pre-hung. We'll slide that into that joint. We'll level that muffler out. And we're working alone here, so we want to make sure that that muffler is going to set in there nice and level, look good. We need to rotate the pipe just a little bit more, make sure she comes up where it belongs. We'll slide our clamp up to here. And the next thing we're going to do is I'll get the welder then, and we're going to weld that joint. Put our ground clamp on. Remember we talked about not tightening those bolts completely until we had it wire welded because then it's a fixture. And once it's a fixture, you'll have a leak right here. After it's, So we've snugged these bolts. Now we're going to wire weld this joint together. Keeping most of your heat on the flange itself because it's the thicker of the metal. You go in a circular motion with your wire welder, round in a circle, and follow your way around that joint. All the way around, I start at the top and I work my way to the bottom. I'll give you a factory weld. I'll switch sides now so I can get over the, across the top on the other side. Remember, like I said before, keeping your wire mostly pointed towards your flange because that's the thicker of the metal. We're going around in a circle and moving our way down and around the pipe. To do that, to concentrate that heat, so we make a very nice weld, a factory finish. And now that we're done with the weld, we're able to snug those bolts up because now it's a fixture. We'll do two things. We'll tighten the bolts at that flange in its place. We'll go back then and make sure our muffler's in its proper position. The muffler's in the position, we'll put the clamp. I always try to put the clamps on so that the clamp edge is at the edge of the muffler. There's a very good reason for that. If you put it up here, what it'll do is it'll tighten at the end of this pipe that's installed in the muffler. If you tighten that up here further forward, it'll want to shove that muffler off that pipe. So you want to keep the edge here so it's nice, crisp, and clean. Tighten a little on one side, a little on the other, and I'm very fussy, so I want this clamp laying level with this level muffler. 
Okay, we check clearances to make sure everything fits, which it does. Now we're quite ready to go back and bend that tailpipe, which we talked about earlier. And we're going to bring that up and around. We'll bring that back and install it. And then we'll finish our piece for the front crossover pipe after the tailpipe's installed. That way we've got one system, one whole side, all hung and finished. And all we have to do then is just finish the crossover pipe. Now we'll go over to bend our tailpipe. I've predetermined from doing several of these vehicles and free bending that a seven foot stick of pipe will do the tailpipe on this Ford car. How I start is, I start with the edge of the pipe at the end of the die. What I'm gonna make now is, and you can follow it around as I go, I'm gonna make a 85 degree bend, and that'll be we'll bend from the first bend over the axle. We'll start at the first bend coming up over the axle. Now remember, we, were, we looked at this pipe. We knew that it had to come in towards the center of the gas tank towards the axle housing to miss the swing arm and to allow us room to come out board to the tire. I'll show you the room that's necessary. What I do is I leave, I leave a finger from the edge of the die to the dimple of the bend, which is, we look at the dimple as the dimple is right here. What I do is I bring it in, I leave a finger, I go ahead and bring this in. Now remembering, that we have to come in board. We have to come in board, so I have to push this down just a few degrees, so that'll bring that pipe in towards the center of the gas tank, towards the housing. Not very far, though. So now we'll make our over the axle bend. This is the next bend that we're making, is over the axle. We're gonna run this approximately 145 degrees, so it brings it up and over nice and clean. We're using a four inch radius die, two inch tubing, and that's will bring us real nice up and over the axle. You can follow the bends as it comes around. You can see right where you're at. We're right at 145. Okay, we'll back this bender up now. Now the next bend that we're going to make is we're gonna make it to come out towards the tire. I'll show you then, quite simply, see what we've done here is this is coming out of the muffler and up. It's coming inward to the tank. See how that? that offset is from here to here. We brought it in towards the center tank to give us more room to make this bend and then the next bend that comes out of the housing. We rotate the pipe, I bring it in, I leave one finger from the dimple of the bend to the edge of the die. I tighten up the bender. Another nice feature about this machine is it's got that spring-loaded feature here where this comes in and does not dimple the pipe. I'll look from this angle, I'll bring this straight. What I want to do then is pull it towards me and what that does is that brings it away from the tire to go towards the outside of the housing. And this particular bend, I know it needs uh, 88 degrees is what it needs. There's a reason for that, that we didn't go complete 90 on it. And the reason we didn't, and I'll show you is, on this top, we're getting very close to the coil spring tower. The coil spring tower's up here. If we brought that a full 90 or even 100, we'd have brought that too close to that spring tower. So when I talk about always remembering how this fits on the vehicle, that's what I'm talking about. Remember the obstructions. We got a swing arm through here. We've got a coil spring tower here. We had to bring it in here, so we got towards the middle of the gas tank, so we had room between now, this bend, and the bend coming outboard outside the frame. Remembering how this fits on the vehicle, I'll bring this in tight tight to this die. I will bring this level because now we're coming outside the frame. We want to make sure that it's level. This comes out of the muffler level, so this bend will be level. So now we'll bring this in and we'll run 78 degrees here. And watch that inside because we're doing this manually. Do it 78 degrees. Retract the machine. The next thing we want to do is we'll want to allow ourselves rooms. Now, See how this pipe is, and now come in board, comes out, it's exiting outside the frame, we got a frame rail here. Okay, and this is level here. So then what we wanna do, we wanna leave ourselves from the edge of the die to the dimple, I usually leave approximately four fingers. Now, remembering how this fits on the vehicle, this bend here is raising that up into the rear quarter panel outside the frame rail. We wanna bring that straight up. Straight up means all we have to do is look here because this is how it's going to fit on the vehicle, level. So if this is level, then this is straight down, okay? And then we'll put approximately 30 degrees or 25 degrees in this one.
25 in this one, be 30 in the next one. The next bend, which I'm going to show, is you see how this kicks straight up, but how we're still at an angle. So we need to do two things. We need to bring this down and we need to bring it back in because this part is drifting to the outside of the car. So this bend controls your down and in to bring it level into the quarter pan. I'll bring that again in tight into that die. I'll bring this up and I call this the fall method. Wants to fall backwards, wants to go the other way. I bring it right in between there and that's where I'll put my 30 degrees. I predetermined that a seven foot stick of pipe will fit on this car. And so we want to put a turn down and we want that turn down straight. So we'll bring the edge of the end of the pipe to the edge of the die. We'll snug up our machine. We know that this fits level with the bottom of the car. It fits level across the bottom of the car. So if this is straight up, you'll have a turn down that's straight down and not angling one side or inside. Okay? So in that, we want to put approximately 25 degrees as a turn down. We'll come back in, and how do you check the pipe at the bender? We'll go ahead and set that here level. What we need to do then on a Ford, because of the tire comes in so close, this will be our last adjustment bend on the Ford. We want to come approximately into here, tight in with the die, and we're going to put a bend that brings this back tailpipe to the outward side. We're going to put it as it fits on the car, okay? We know that this is going to come approximately straight up. We know that this is going to be level with the car. So then what we need to do is put a few degrees in here, and we'll check that. Make sure that we've got enough bend in it. We'll actually check it here to make sure that this fits into the quarter panel level and that this pipe out here is level. And so we have it. All we have to do now is we need to end finish this. We'll angle cut this. We then need to cut this off short, because on a Ford, we need all the distance we can from the gas tank in. So we'll cut this off short, and we'll resize it on the pipe bender so that it fits into the muffler. We need to bring the outside diameter two inch. That's how the muffler is. I will go over to the cutoff saw, and I'll end finish this, and I'll come back and resize it then so that it fits onto the muffler. This particular finger swedger has the white paint on it. The white paint on it signifies it's a two inch swedger. We put it on there, on the machine. We want the outside diameter two inch, so we look on the scale. It says we need to be on the square six. So we'll in turn rotate this around so that we have the square six neatly into the side eye, which is what we do. We have that neatly into the side eye. We'll then put that over that. We'll then operate that Resize that up, turn it as we go. We've talked about that earlier and how to do that because we don't want any flat spots in it. And you see by the gap in here, if you just expanded it out, you'd have these six flat spots around here. So you don't want to do that. Just move it around a little bit, resize it. I take it back around to the front of the bender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put just this very end into the next die just in from this one, just slightly on the edge here, and I'm going to bump that in just a little bit. And what that does is that takes a, a round edge, curls it just a little on the end, so that you're able to get rid of this cut end. Because usually when you cut this and you flare it, it flares out. So you need to downsize that end just a touch. Now we'll be able to go over. We've already checked this at the machine. We already know how it's going to fit. We're already level. We know that that kicks up a little bit, and that's angle cut. We've checked this pipe now at the machine. We're able to go over and slip it on the car and tighten it up. Bring this tailpipe back in. We're going to install it on a vehicle. Remember, we've kept the vehicle to the back of the hoist, and by this post, this tailpipe would come up and over and in. You'll see that we've already installed that clamp. You know, we're going to save a step here. We're working alone, so we're going to do that. The next thing we want to do is we want to hook up our welder up over the top because we need to spot weld the tailpipe to the hanger. So now what we'll do, we've got this real nice hood here that uh, you can keep the hood down, work alone, hold this up, and we'll spot this hanger into place. 
actually finish weld it. I'll go over to the other side, finish welding that uh, hanger back into place. Unhook the welder, remove your hat. We're going to come back underneath, we're going to get our air wrench. We're going to bring our air wrench in. Remember, we talked about getting that clamp to the back side of that so that it tightens it up properly. We want this clamp level. We want to make sure it's missing everything. The gas tank up over the housing, it is missing everything. A little bit on one side, a little bit more on the other. Finish cinching it. You have the one half of the system completely installed. The only thing that I'd recommend when you finish welding the crossover pipe when you get down to that point, you make sure and spot weld the inlet and the outlet of the muffler. There's a reason I do that. Clamps do not make a total 360 degree sealing point. In order for it to seal, it needs moisture to seal it, and the, and the moisture will rust and seal that joint. So if you spot weld it, I mean a spot weld, not a bridge weld. We just spot weld it so it can't move. It'll allow that moisture to get in that joint and rust it. That way the joint isn't moving to break that rust all the time so it never seals. Now we're going to go back over. We're going to make our crossover so we can come back and finish this job. We come back to the bender now to finish our uh, Y pipe. You'll remember that when we started this procedure and we made our first pipe, we started with the end of the pipe at the edge of the die. We're going to do the same thing here so it looks symmetrical. We put 50 degrees bend in. Let's follow this around so that we get 50 degrees bend, just like we did the other side. Okay. Now that we've got 50 degrees bend in, we need to go back over to the car and we need to mark where it meets the other pipe so that we can cut that off with our cutoff soft and finish it, slice it so that it fits around the tubing. And then I'll show underneath the car how it fits. So now we'll go back over to the car and we'll make our mark. I'm going to come back underneath the vehicle and what we'll need to do, we'll need to determine where we're going to cut this off. We made this bend so that it connects over to this other pipe. Uh, two important things. I run this in at an angle so that it meets the bend, so that it crosses at the same plane, so that it doesn't create any restriction. So what I'll do is that crossover pipe, I'll get underneath here and I'll actually mark this across. And for the viewer, we'll actually do this with a magic marker. Comes straight out, comes level, comes into the middle of this pipe. We'll go ahead and mark it. We'll leave a half an inch in. And the reason we leave approximately a half an inch is because what we're going to do is we're going to cut this pipe off. And we're actually going to angle cut it with our finishing tool on either side so that it fits around this pipe so that we can finish welding it. Then we'll come back. We'll actually fit it on. And we'll mark it. We'll actually cut our hole out. And then we'll put it up and finish welding it. Coming back underneath the car, I've end finished this. You see how I've angle cut each side and I made them the same because I made this pipe come straight into this one. You'll now see how nice it fits. It'll butt up to your other pipe and it leaves no gap. That way it's an easy wire weld. I'll go ahead and mark that with a magic marker just so that you can sight what I can see under here and what I'm gonna cut out. Make sure you cut on the inside on the inside of that line, not on the outside. Therefore, you won't leave yourself any gap. You can cut it a couple different ways. You can cut it with a plasma cutter. You can cut it with a cutting torch. If you cut it with a cutting torch, which that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to put the angle of the cutting torch up there so that you don't blow a hole through the back side. This is how you would cut it. You'd actually come at this angle. You'd start at the top and work your way around the inside of that line around halfway. You will then turn around and come back in at this angle and turn it around the other way. When you come to the bottom, this piece of hot metal is going to want to come off, so you want to make sure that you clear that when it drops. Now we'll light the torch and we'll actually cut the hole. Put your hood on, your full face shield. That way you don't blow any sparks on yourself. You don't need the torch set way hot. It's hot enough to cut through the tubing. We're going to come on the inside of that line. Make a nice clean cut and you see how I'm facing it towards the back of the car. We're going to get back up in here. We're going to get on the inside of that line again. 
I'm going to cut up and around the top side. You see, I haven't put a hole through the back side here. Now we're coming with that hot spot that's going to drop. And there it is. It's out of your way. You've got a nice hole that's two inches in diameter. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to wire weld that. We've put this, installed this pipe back up in its location to show you where the hole's at. We'll put it back up in our flange, which we haven't tightened yet. We make this level so that it's level with the other side. As it comes out of the catalytic converter, you actually can get it to a level point here. You go ahead and hold that. You see how nice that fits. Okay, we're going to weld, wire weld around that gap, going in that circular motion again and following from top to bottom. And we'll actually fill that. We didn't have much of a gap around there, you understand, because we fit that so well before. And that saves a lot of time for you. Now that we've got that joint welded, we're going to come back over here and weld that flange. The last thing we'll do then is tighten that up. Remember how we welded it before? We kept most of our heat on the flange itself because it's thicker metal. And we went around in a circle. And that sent our heat into that flange rather well. We weld from top to bottom. Weld around 50% of it. Then we'll get to the top of the other side. We'll start up there, going in that circular motion, most of the heat on the flange, not so much on the uh, pipe itself. And we'll finish this weld around this flange, right, right to the bottom. When we get to that point, once we have our welder hooked up, we might as well spot weld the necks of the muffler. So we'll just get here like we talked before. We're talking just a spot. We'll go back, you spot the back joint as well. Now we'll go back up and we'll tighten up that joint. Come back in with the impact wrench. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten those bolts up. Why we didn't tighten them before is we didn't want a warp flange. Warpage. It's going to seal up perfectly when we start the car up. Let's make an overview of the system that we just made. Started here by putting the flanges on. We didn't tighten them all the way because we didn't want to warp them over the gasket. Because once they're welded, they're fitment. They're done. We've made the whole right side. We did it all the way to the back and completed it. We come back in then and made this crossover pipe. Same degrees as what we put in the first one. It also comes into the middle of the bend so that the flow works together. It didn't come in straight over to this side and actually cause a restriction. It's all flowing back at a 45 degree angle so that it hooks and goes back into the muffler properly. Once you're done with this job, you want to be very fussy about it. We are. We went to the extent of doing everything correct all the way. We even went to the extent of having clamps level. The last thing that we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to trim the ends of the clamp off. For two reasons. Nuts don't come loose. The job looks finished. Someone else is going to be under that car other than an exhaust shop. When you change oil or have the car serviced for any reason, front end, rear end, ball joints, shocks, whatever, that person's going to notice that. They're a mechanic and they know what's right and what's wrong. And they'll see that somebody went to the extra time to do this job correct. Trim the ends of the clamps off so that it looks nice and level and it looks like a fine job when it's all said and done. We've just shown on this video uh, the profitability of the MC59 Ben Pearson Tube Master muffler shop machine. You can do that whole job on this machine with straight tubing. You don't have to carry a, a intense line of uh, pre-bent. You don't have to worry about having all that pre-bent on stock. You just need your straight tubing. Shown how a job such as this is very profitable. We built this crossover pipe, put the muffler and the tailpipe on. In some areas, it'll range from $150 to $250 job. Uh, a person with a little bit of experience should take them approximately a half an hour to do the job. An experienced man can do it anywhere in 10 to 15 minutes, can bend and install and weld up this system. Um, that goes to show there's quite a bit of profitability here. I try to look at an experienced man can more than likely bend and install this system in the time it takes most novices to look up in the book what the part numbers are, go to the shelf and pull all the parts and bring it over and try to install it. 
an experienced man can have this job bent and installed. That's why Ben Pearson has a fine line of tube makers so that you can be more profitable in your shop.